I was scrolling around YouTube and I came across one of my favorite channels. Frito, you're Overwatch. Congratulations on 800,000 subs, my man. Overwatch boomers really want 6v6 back. And this video was addressed at the Group Up podcast that I was on arguing for 5v5 versus 6v6. And I obviously was arguing for 6v6. And the most offensive part of this video is the reality that I have to accept that I am closing in on boomer status, right? I'm getting there, man. Frito, Frito's like a mentor to me. And it's it's not often that we actually disagree on issues in the game. So, you know, we, we both love game theory. It's, it's always fun to talk about this. So I figured I'd make a reaction video because I don't mind if you prefer 5v5. That's fine. But what really grinds my gears is when people claim they like 5v5 and state the reasons for it as objective facts when they are not true, when the opposite is true for what they're arguing. Frito, in his defense, is identifying issues properly in the game, but they haven't realized yet that 5v5 exacerbates the exact issues that they bring up more than 6v6 did, and it applies it to your casual player. The hard meta counter-swapping tanks that you really only see in high-level play when people claim that tank synergies are the most OP thing in the game, which, newsflash, they were not, and I've got a video coming out on that later. Supports broke the game, not tank synergies. We'll talk about that later, but we're going to break this video down, react to it, and get into the facts about what are the reasonings behind why people like 5v5 more? And are they actually true? The claims people making true? In this case, I beg to differ. So let's see. Let's get right into the video. Frito, you have the stage, my man. Let's do it. 1.25x. What's going on, guys? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. The only thing that I enjoy more than being on the Group Up podcast is listening to it. If I could, I would take that podcast, roll it up, and smoke it, which I think it might be required because of some of the arguments I'm hearing for 6v6 to return in Overwatch. I think they're suffering from some severe memory loss with some of the things I'm hearing coming out of the community with these rose-tinted glasses. But I've seen a lot of you guys in the comment section as well on the 6v6 hype train. So let's break it down and try to steel man that argument first and then go through all the reasons why I think it's a ludicrous idea. Some objective things about 6v6. It had a higher skill ceiling because of the complexity of the team compositions. We had pretty much all of the same shooter kits that we do in Overwatch 2, but with a severely more complicated added layer of tank synergy, which when you pick synergistic tanks, had the skill ceiling of really maximizing the control in a MOBA aspect. Nowadays, tanks in Overwatch 2 are more Giga Brawlers. And I think it's just fair to say, like, as a personal preference, I prefer just interacting with another tank on my team. I, I And I think casual, like, it's not necessarily the skill ceiling, right? Excuse me. It's it's just about like what you preferred, I guess, if that if that's more of a preferencing and not talking about how they actually interact with each other in the game. Like I just thought as a tank player, it was more fun to have another one to interact with. And a common theme that I see and on the Group Up podcast, we didn't do a great job of talking about the casual player's experience, right? And that's something I try to take the conversation to, but when you've got three co-hosts, right, who are very passionate Overwatch League pro players, right? You know, it's it's hard to take the conversation away from there. And I, I, I wish we could have represented the casual player better, but a lot of casual players don't like the stress of solo tanking, right? Your mistakes are super apparent. Master Ian, Ga Master Ian Gamer, excuse me, Jesus Christ, uh, had a great video out talking about it. And uh, a lot of people just like having another tank there. It takes pressure off them. It's it's more fun and it just adds, it's just, there's more to do and people preferred that. So if that's your preference, there you go. It's Only not, Overwatch about the skill fans ceiling. remember how difficult, challenging, and deep the game got with two tanks because the fundamentals of layer... Also, hot take, I don't think it was that difficult to bubble another tank as Zarya. I, I don't. I, I think doing it right and then executing mechanically was the hard part, but like actually bubbling was one of the medium difficulty things, for example, on Zarya. Bring your abilities together to maximize space when working correctly was unlike any other game experience that's ever been released. Now, in the 6v6 camp, they make the claim that the heroes were designed for 6v6. Well, if you heard the devs from Overwatch 1 talk, I'm I'm not sure they even knew what some of those heroes were designed for necessarily. The devs didn't understand what they designed half the time too. Look at Brigida, right? She's broke the game even now. She still hasn't been fundamentally changed, which I will talk about a little bit down the line. From what I understood, especially then, they designed heroes based on their character fantasy and the sort of formatting was secondary, definitely. And meta implications and game balance and OP synergies, those aren't really on the table when it comes to the design of the game. They just want to make fun characters. But what I will agree with is that in the two tank scenario, having an off tank meant you could kind of supplement any playstyle. And even as metas can come and go, there was always options for you to pick around your Roadhog player. Or whereas in Overwatch 2, you just have a Roadhog. And before he gets his rework, he very clearly does not seem like he's got all of the tools a tank needs in order to maintain that single role position for now. The other standout is a key takeaway right now, Wrecking Ball, pretty horrible of a tank in the turret meta, mainly because his strength isn't holding the front line. It's scurrying and setting up pincer attacks. And in some metas, he's been pretty good. I think he's been underrated in Overwatch. It's not about how Ball's been pretty good. 
It doesn't matter how you balance ball. You could balance him to making the most OP hero in the game. In 5v5, that way to play the character can never come back. The disruptor tank can't exist because if you're going in the back line trying to disrupt, your team does not have a front line, right? There's no way that you can even begin to attempt to play that character. And that one dimensionality of the tank role it doesn't really matter if you're at the skill ceiling of the game or you're at the skill floor. You suffer that loss. If you liked playing these characters, you cannot play them no matter what rank you are, right? And the big argument about tank synergies that people try to bring up when they say they were the most OP thing in the game, they were too OP, is that in order to execute them, you had to be at the ceiling of the game, right? You had to be really, really good or else they weren't impressive because you couldn't combo, right? That was the whole argument. And the only time you really saw those combos be overwhelmingly effective were at the skill ceiling by that logic. But now... It'll be, if you go to 5v5, this change affects even the skill floor. It affects everyone. It's not the right answer to go through. So because tank synergies were allegedly, which is not true, and I have a video coming out in this next week showing supports are what broke tanks, not the tanks themselves, though some of them were too OP in their design, taking away all of these play styles from these characters because the skill ceiling of tanks were too strong, does not do more good for the game than bad. It does not. It does not. It does more bad than good, without a doubt, because now every every player in every rank can't play these heroes that way. Watch 2 in different points of its life, but for sure in the meta where it's all about big cooldowns. And no a matter lot how strong the character is. Sustainability, there's just not much point to manipulate their positioning and try to set up a pincer because the healing and stats of everything is so high that it's not really going to do a whole lot. Tanks that sort of just hold their ground or have effects for the team are just going to be way better than ball for a while, I think, until the game powers down. They always will be. It's more complicated. So they always will be. Two very clear, distinct. Because that's how you have to play tank with one tank. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does, the disruptor tank can never be like, unless you break ball as a character, it can never be a real role in this game because the rest of your team just gets rolled. Left high and dry type characters, that 5v5 left in the dust. A couple more key points for the 6v6 camp. We didn't have it long enough in roll queue. The problem was in the development cycle at the time, they were really focusing on Overwatch 2 and the story missions and all that. So while we did get roll queue eventually in Overwatch, they only added a couple more characters after that. We got roll queue around Sigma and then the game wasn't even really picking up its balance cadence until after Echo and well after for that matter. So by the end, they started balancing it better, but we went from like either double shield to that getting toned back and i think the community is sort of forgetting wrecking ball and hog being meta for a while which wasn't so great either on the alternate end of the spectrum but that's their main argument that it wasn't tested long enough to properly get any balance concerns looked at the ba they, they never fundamentally changed the heroes they had to change ae ie the aoe healers that was what was so broken brigida baptiste they never sat down and fixed these characters in overwatch one and actually fundamentally changed how the heroes work something was so bad in roll queue that with the right moves they would argue that it would perform a lot better so we can't necessarily just look to problematic heroes in 222 roll queue because the new balance philosophy of speeding up the cadence hadn't really kicked in yet another argument for 6v6 to 5v5 is that in 5v5 steam rolls are much more severe and common especially now in season six the rock paper scissors is getting out of control whereas in 6v6 because you had two tanks you could build a much more well-protected team comp and at least feel like you're countering out a big percentage of the enemy Enemy's offense. Whereas in Overwatch 2, there's always a weakness to your comp. Your comp can always be somewhat countered. It might be a non-meta viable hero that counters you, but there's always openings for those heroes to make plays on you. Whereas in Overwatch 1, it was much more about making stable team comps and playing a more, let's say, teamwork-based game, as opposed to a counterpick, skillful, deathmatchy style game that we- It wasn't even that, right? The big difference here, and this is where players really, really lost, is that in 5v5 with one tank, if the enemy tank counterpicks you, you are countered harder in 5v5 than you were in 6v6 because at least then there was another tank that you didn't even necessarily have to synergize with that could help mitigate you being counterpicked. For example, if you were a hog player in 6v6, right, and the enemy team picked D.Va, right, where D.Va could matrix all your hooks, for example, she could dive you, she could peel her back line, she could do whatever, right? Or I guess maybe a better example would be Orisa, though she did get a rework, right? Or let's say, let's say Sigma, right? Your team could either one pick a Sigma, they could pick Azaria, they could pick anything. It doesn't necessarily matter what it is, right? That other tank could help you a little bit more than in this game where you can't switch at all, get around the fact that you've been counterpicked. 
and it allowed you as a player to still have the freedom of play to play your character, even if they picked a more optimal pick into you. In 5v5, the, the idea of hard countering someone, which rips the freedom of the game away, and it's not about how you play, but what you pick, and it, it, it exacerbates that issue, right? It makes it so that you are countered, and unless you swap, you are just going to get farmed, and it's not going to be fun. For example, if you're a Junker Queen player, and you're trying to play Queen on a poke map, right? Try, you're trying to play Queen on Havana, and they're on full poke. Your whole team is going to get floored, and you're going to get floored as well. However, if it was 6v6, one of your other tanks could pick a Sigma. They could pick a Reinhardt, even. They could pick a lot of different things, and that would help offset the fact that you're on an inoptimal pick in the wrong situation, right? You're just on an inoptimal pick. So now, all of that responsibility is on you, and if you read the comments from people who want to play tank, they hate that feeling. So when you go to 5v5 to make one less tank requirement for each game to get a match started, how many tank players have you lost because they're forced to play that way? I don't play tank anymore. Dozens of people have been commenting, hundreds of people have been commenting that they don't play tank anymore for that reason. So now you've driven away people from the tank role because all the pressure's on them. They don't like it. The game doesn't feel like it's in their hands because they're constantly getting counterpicked. And now there's all these MOs and stuff that have been put into the game. The game is out of your control. It's easier to get hard countered, especially as a tank, in 5v5. And that freedom of choice has been ripped away from you as a player. And no matter how you balance the game, how good your tank is, how bad your tank is, that concept will always exist and be more prevalent regardless of balance in the game. You cannot balance that effect out of the game. While in 6v6, you had way more of a chance to actually balance the characters to make sure that didn't happen, especially to your average player who used to not pick the meta tank, right? The whole the big point in this video, which I'm going to save this point for later, is low ranked players never played the meta. They played what was fun. They played their favorite characters. But now, because there's only one tank, those favorite characters that people like to play because people don't like to switch too often are hard countered way easier, and that was something that they did not have to deal with as much in Overwatch 1 compared to Overwatch 2. Strategy, I think it's safe to say, was less turbulent. In Overwatch 2, there's strategy there too, but it can hit you really hard and fast. And you sort of just have to counterpick in order to stabilize things. Counterpicking is not strategy. That's just that's just rock, paper, scissors, no depth. I wouldn't even that's barely even strategy. What was so beautiful about Overwatch 1, you had to make a plan and then actually execute it, right? But the individual tanks have had to become so strong, you don't have to you like your execution matters way less. It's way more about what you pick. And that's not a fun video game. You don't have to be a god tier player to understand that or execute that. You could be an average player to understand that. Get rolled forever. In Overwatch 1, the defenses were so much higher that swapping your tank composition specifically, but also the tanks and supports together, you could at least slow the game down. It's not about defenses sure. either. It's just about picking. 5v5 is far more chaotic. Because it always feels like even after That's you counterpick one thing, thing, if another enemy decides to counterpick you, well, now you're on the back foot and it kind of goes back and forth with the rock, paper, scissors in the asymmetric 5v5 team comp formation. Okay, I'm sure they have more arguments than that, but those are, I think, the strongest points. A lot of them are just straight up logically true. My issue is, where there's some higher truths that are above all of these things, things that make me conclude for sure 5v5 is undoubtedly the right way to go and I think we should just silence these 6v6 talks and instead try to take some aspects of what we've learned along the way to adapt 5v5. You can't. A few ones stand out right away. No matter how you balance 5v5, you can never get rid of that concept. You cannot change the fact that that concept is exacerbated in, in 5v5. You cannot get rid of the fact, unless you go to open Q 5v5, but that's not going to happen either, right? Oh, that was not a suggestion, by the way. Was, that was not a suggestion. Don't run with that one, Blizzard. You cannot fix that problem. No matter how you balance the game, no matter what you do, you cannot balance that out of the game. There will always be a tank that is better than another tank in the role. There will always be things that counter, especially the original heroes, in this way, and you cannot get rid of that. That idea of counter-swapping cannot be dissolved. And it is a much bigger problem in this game than it was in the previous one. No matter how you, you cannot adapt it to 5v5. It doesn't work. Wait. You're trying to fit a square piece of a puzzle into a circle. There's not enough room. All in Hog should get reworked. We'll see that over time. Let's see what Hog, after he gets more teamwork abilities, plays like. Because I think, for example, if he was a little bit more complicated, like Junker Queen, maybe we'd have an entirely different conversation about the more solo QS flanking Hog playstyle. He could be re-engineered to be more useful to the team like Queen can be, despite being, you know, kind of similar. Yeah, but now, but now you have no chance of picking Queen on the poke maps, unless you make Queen Giga Busted, in which case all the other tanks that people love are going to fall off and just be replaced. 
You can't fix that idea. It's a flow of ideas that you cannot change in 5v5. In terms of CC, shotgun based hero, skill shot, low on protection for the team, but you can still play Overwatch 2 with that character because of the shout. I think Wrecking Ball's not far off. You, you can't you can't play Queen on the poke maps just because she has shout. Yeah, like, she'll get floored, right? Aside, are we going to have a deployment-based meta be like a strong component in Overwatch all of a sudden? It felt like in Overwatch 2, we had dodge double shield forever. But then they just kept adding deployment stuff, and now there is a bunkery style of play that re-emerged in the game. Prior to that, it was much more rush or flank. And poke existed as well, but it wasn't stable. Poke was defined more so by its ranged firepower as opposed to the deployables that you could maintain the team with. And this is also a bit of an argument from the 6v6 camp, is that a lot of the power was transitioned away from one of the tanks and into the support roster, which I think Think is undoubtedly true i had said as much especially when we look at characters like life weaver or the way we have to play around batiste lamp or suzu nowadays those are some of the best defense on the team and support as opposed tanks. to your tank being the one who's going to protect you from some big ultimate coming in you need your support to do that play now because tank in 5v5 is a lot more about anchoring your position and the styles of the gameplay it's it's one dimensional you have to exist in the right spot as a tank you can't make big flank plays you can't you can do less of that tank is one way more one dimensional and boring and you don't have to be a good player to realize that. It's certainly much more formulaic, less complicated, and more straightforward. More often than not, you're just going to anchor the cart, interact with the characters that you counter, and you're more so holding the line as opposed to, like, pushing for space. There's no way of, like, cycling Ryan Zarya cooldowns to Which was some of the, the most fun line. part you of the role. You can go at their tank or hold your ground, and that's sort of what tanking is in 5v5. But even with all of this sounding kind of bad, I still think that the arguments pro 5v5 are so much stronger that none of these downsides will be worth to change it back. All right, I'm start going ham. I think it's ridiculous to think that 6v6 was easier or more balanceable because it seems like nowadays we're just forgetting about so many Overwatch 1 specific problems which had to be fixed and rectified. The strongest one of course was that there was not enough tank players to put two tanks in every game. That might be the only argument we really need to make. We didn't have the player base to sustain that format and because of that queue times on the other roles specifically DPS a role that really got the short end of the stick for the majority of Overwatch 1 for quite a few reasons had to have horrible queue times let's talk about these queue times okay the game was abandoned for multiple years tanks and players who played tank who loved and the tanks that had the highest pick rates the classic heroes reinhardt zarya diva these characters were overshadowed by broken do-it-all dlc heroes that were the fundamental flaws of jeff goodman and jeff kaplan's game design vision to make a complicated game at first and make it easier over time. They didn't understand how to make the game lower at the skill floor without adding characters that just did everything in the game. There was countless CC players that tank players complained about that never got addressed. Countless immortality abilities that just hard countered anything you would do as Reinhardt, as Zarya. And you didn't have the infinite sustain loop that the double shield tanks had. Which is why people gave up on the role. Because the fan favorite characters weren't playable. Unless you were in plat. And I'll admit, less people were queuing tank. But I think a big reason for that was because of all these immo abilities and the supports that just countered what it was to do these heroes and play these characters. With all the CC in the game that Brigida had while healing the whole team. Let's also talk about this. All three of the tanks that were added into Overwatch 1 did not play in the styles that caused the original player base to fall in love with tank heroes. Orisa was niche and generally considered to be boring, but they reworked her in this game, so that could have been put into the game, right? There was no new content for tank. Ball was also a niche character. Sigma, and even when Sigma came out and people didn't really like him aside from a small niche of players, it was still a pretty popular role until Double Shield meta came out and ruined it. The game was still paywalled. The game was canceled for Overwatch 2. People were waiting for all of these things. We never got to try any of this in the free-to-play model with this style of design of tank. If Junker Queen was in 6v6, if Ramatra was in 6v6, which is very, very easy to do, right? If heroes like that, that played more in line with the tank heroes that everybody fell in love with in the original game, it would be a very different argument. And let's not forget this. We want to say that nobody queued tank? Okay, that was the true for support as well. Back in the Moth meta, the hardest thing to do was find someone who wanted to play support when the meta went away from Ana and Zen. You couldn't find people to play support, so it also was true for support in the past. And you know how they fixed that? They added Baptiste. They added Kiriko. They added Alari. Right? Heroes that actually are a fun and engaging playstyle. The tank designs that they came out with for three straight years were boring. And nobody liked them. That's not an issue with the role, that's an issue with the game design. That's not an issue with the format, that's an issue with the game design. 
And it's been proven to be true in Overwatch 2. Because they've made these engaging, frankly, OP supports. And the queue times in GM, top 500, are exponentially longer for support. So let's talk about this. By removing one of the tanks, you remove how most of these roles were picked. And you put more pressure on the casual player. Right? That's caused less people to want to play tank. So you, while you lowered the requirement, you lowered the desire and the supply as well alongside the demand. So the ratio to how many people are filling games is not nearly as great as you are arguing, as many people are arguing, because less people want to play the role in general because it's lost what made it special. It's lost what's made it fun, even to your average player. And you force a one-dimensional, boring, rock, paper, scissors play style on the casual player base, the same people who did not have to deal with nearly as much the optimal pick and synergy. Sure, I'm sure people in low ranks flamed each other sometimes for not picking Ryan Zarya. But they were picking Ryan Zarya even when Ryan Zarya wasn't the meta. It doesn't matter down there. If that's what people were arguing, then they were wrong. Straight up, they were wrong. And there's nothing from a gameplay format thing that would make those players not be wrong. That's just something you can't, literally can't deal with. And I'm not saying it was perfect in low ranks either. I'm saying in 5v5... Those problems got forced on even the casual player more than in 6v6 because of how counterpicking works in this game. And that has made the role less appealing in general and has driven people away. And if heroes like Junker Queen and Ramatra had come out in 6v6, I can assure you, you'd have way more people playing the tank role. If the CC across the board had gotten reduced like it did in this game, you'd have way more people playing tank across the board. So the problem was how they designed the game. It was not the actual format. You can't fix bad design through format. And the queue times, again, like there's so many other factors that contributed to that. That could have solved that. That have been proven to work in this game. By adding content and adding fun, engaging characters that do a lot. That aren't broken, right? Queen was broken. I guess Ram was pretty good too. But they've been nerfed down to a pretty reasonable rate. And they absolutely could have existed in 6v6. And that would have been way more attractive to the role. Removing a tank is a band-aid fix that doesn't actually address the disease. It's like you break your arm and you go to the doctor they give you a band-aid. That's wrong. It doesn't work. And if that really did work, why are queue times for tanks still just as low as they were in the previous game? It's because you drove away just as many players as you, as you saved by making the game requirements lower. Because a lot of people don't even bother playing the role anymore because their, their ability to play that role was removed from the game and it can never be balanced back. This was so severe that the devs even considered the 132 experiment, where they tried one tank, who was a Giga tank similar to the 5v5 tank we have today, but three DPS, because that was more reasonable to the distribution of players who wanted to play Overwatch. Then on top of that, even more importantly, I don't have to just make a utilitarian argument based on the players we have. I'd go one step further and say that the quality of the game experience for those DPS players is way better in 5v5. They're the majority of the player base, and in 6v6, because the gameplay was so much about tanks, most of the DPS players experience was shooting tanks let's just forget the whole like double shield problem pretend that's not even a thing tanks that were actually killable in the previous game that now are never killable because there's way more healing in this game to compensate for one tank every support has an immortality ability and every average player out there like we don't have to treat these players like they're dumb they've learned very quickly you just can't kill tanks in this game you can't you had a better chance of killing a tank in the previous game than you do now that's not a better experience just because the top end players were constantly shooting barriers does not mean your average player was. They were playing against Ryan Zarya. And what did they always complain about? Reaper. Reaper just walking into my team and killing everybody. It wasn't a problem. These lower level players did not experience that. Most of DPS players get... Not nearly to the degree that they experienced that in 5v5. And I have to be careful about these arguments. I'm not saying that they never experienced that in 6v6. I'm saying that it, those issues are actually more prevalent in this game. Experience in 6v6 is just trying to get around the tanking. As opposed to 5v5 where, I'll admit, when I play DPS, I can be a big crybaby if I don't like what my tank's doing. But I know, at the end of the day, even if they're losing the battle on the front line, I always should be able to get value on the flank. In Overwatch 2, there's wide... You can't get value on the flank when every character has a get out of jail free card or an MO ability. It's just as hard if not harder. Open flank lanes so you can help your tank or you can flank. Kiriko can just TP away. Ilari has a drone that auto heals her. 
Bap can just drone and kill you. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if you're getting counterpicked, losing the game, whatever. And I think players are really undervaluing the quality of that experience. Getting steamrolled in Overwatch 2 can be really tough, but the counterpicking in the DPS category exists as well, whether it's on the hero choices or on your playstyle. So even if your tank's getting countered, you can at least shoot the enemy. You might still lose, you might get stomped. You but they, okay, yes, you could say the exact same thing for 6v6, and if one of your tanks was getting countered, it was still more forgiving for you, especially in the average ranks where these players didn't have to deal with the oppressive comps that the GM players did. But now, because these tanks are super tanks, when they become meta and they're the flavor of the month, it's even more prevalent for the average player to have to go up against that. It's even more snowbally. That's not better. That's not true, right? What actually is affecting the lower SR games sticks out like more of a sore thumb now than it did previously. And sometimes that like that will always exist, but it's not better. You might get all of that. That's but not, it's not true. the same experience as having the enemy have two tanks that you just can't interact with the entire game. And and it's, you could interact with tanks more and kill tanks more in the previous game than you could now. I'd rather have a chance at shooting two two different tanks that actually have to execute some kind of crazy synergy to survive together, then now to have it just be one super tank that a support can press one button on and make them invincible on top of their crazy abilities on their own that they have to have to be able to survive as a solo tank. You can interact more with those players. In the previous game, there was a higher requirement for them to do things right to actually survive and get value than now where even the supports have been given the extra power too, so it's even harder to interact with the supports in this game. Because not only are they crazy duelists, Kiriko can TP away, she can two-tap you, Ilari can two-tap you, right? And have auto-heal mechanics, boop you away and CC you as a DPS player, right? The tank, the solo tank, you're never gonna beat, especially if they're on an optimal pick and you're not. So the idea that it's easier to interact with his tanks in this game is not true. It's harder for your average player to interact with a tank in this game. They aren't going to kill them. It was easier for them to pick Reaper in Overwatch 1 and just run it down and kill them. All the tanks had less health. All the tanks had less sustain cooldowns, right? Now every one of these tanks who ends up being meta has sustain cooldowns comparable to what the meta double shield was in Overwatch 1. They've all been buffed to this degree. It is not easier for your average player to interact with this. D.Va has a four second matrix now again, and more health. Zarya has two personal bubbles and more health. Hog now gets a heal buff after healing. That It is objectively false that it is easier for your average player to interact with tanks in this game. The high sustained broken synergies of tanks have been auto applied at the skill floor to every tank in the game. Well, previously they had to execute. It is completely different, and that is not true. That is not true. That is not how it plays out in the actual game. Losing badly in Overwatch 2 happens just like in 1, and in some ways people would argue it's harsher, but I don't agree. I think you at least have openings to get some eliminations, whereas in Overwatch 1, the RPG team comp builder aspect of it was so severe, there were situations on maps where you could not shoot the enemy, ever. It is not easier to get like one-on-one -on -one eliminations in this game as a DPS player than it was in the other game. Outside of the broken four DLC characters of Baptiste, Brigida, who also has been buffed a ton with increased shield bass range and a ton of other things, right? The support passive, right? And Arissa and Sigma. It was much easier to get kills in the previous game, especially in one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two situations because there were less get-out-of-jail-free abilities, there was less healing, there was less actual cooldowns that were powerful on each of these characters. It, and it was harder to execute. That's just not true. You start losing the frontline battle, the game's just over. You might as well sit and spawn as a squishy character. Actually unplayable. Just because you're getting steamrolled in Overwatch 2 and the rock, paper, scissors is severe, you still get to play. You still get to shoot at the enemy at some point. You can still get an angle, hit a headshot, make a combo. You could do the exact same thing in Overwatch 1 and those and those shots that you hit. I took an off angle as Hanzo, I headshot as Arya. She only had one bubble to get herself out. She was lower health and closer to death, right? It, it, that's just not true. Land your ult, the gameplay experience is still playable. Overwatch 1 in many cases was unplayable in the biggest way that in, it- In Double Shield's case, it, only in Double Shield. Only in Double Shield, which they never fixed. 
was unplayable is the gap between your team comp being bad and the enemies being good. Let's just put meta aside. That can make it more severe when there's a balance patch that promotes double shield and your team wants to play something that just isn't viable for the meta. Just forget that. Across many, many metas in 6v6, if your team didn't have a synergistic comp, you kind of just couldn't play the game. And in 5v5, you may still lose because of the rock, paper, scissors matchup not going your way somewhere. Right now, I'd say if you don't have a Bastion and your team isn't countering their Bastion, it's just going to be a hard time. If they go Orisa and you target the Orisa and they got a Life Weaver healing it forever and you never target him, well, good luck. There's just this is not, that's not true because you're forced to swap more in this game. In order for the 6v6 synergistic overwhelming cop to actually overwhelm you, both players had to pick the right things. Both players had to execute together. And most of the time, it wasn't that oppressive. It was only in double shield. Ryan Diva, tons of things were killable, right? But now, and that only really had to happen if everybody was playing properly. But now, even in the lower ranks, 5v5 and putting all of that power into one character, if your character is the meta and the other one isn't, and your character counters the other character, it's even more prevalent. You get steamrolled more, and you're forced to switch more in this game where it's not about what you pick or how you, it's not about how you play, it's about what you pick. This is like, you get overwhelmed by the meta better characters more in this game than you did in the previous game, especially in the tank role. Especially in the tank role. Maybe not as much in DPS, because DPS just doesn't really matter right now. Because or near, DPS doesn't matter as much, because supports are just better DPS with tons of get-out-of-jail-free abilities. Tons of things that just auto-deny the value. So if DPS like are just getting denied the value, aside from, hmm, what heroes don't really have to deal with um, the countless immortalities and stuff? Oh, that's right, the heroes that one-shot. Like Widowmaker or Hanzo or Old Sojourn, right? Which is why you're seeing the burst damage heroes or heroes that do insane amounts of damage that have just been buffed to meta, like Bastion, get picked. And you're forced to swap more with less diversity in the game. These statements about 5v5 are not true. What you're arguing and you're saying make 5v5 better are objectively wrong. So if you want to prefer 5v5, don't list reasons that don't actually that aren't accurate for what's happening in the game. That's my problem with it. Just certain things like that in 5v5 that are super oppressive, let's say. But I sincerely feel that the community just isn't very good at this game yet. A lot of the comms that I hear and a lot right. of the arguments for certain things, the rapid balancing in 5v5 has really let You're right. the player... The community wasn't good at the game, which means most of them couldn't even execute these OP tank synergies. But when you, by default, give it to each of these tanks as a passive to have to make them more competitive, that effect of the OP synergies is more overwhelming and the counterpicking is more overwhelming. I'm not going to repeat myself. Into complacency and just expect the game to solve it for what they want to do and play. Whereas 5v5 is more complex and emphasizing counterpicking. I think it's too severe and I'm not a huge fan. I'd rather have drafts and all that, but they want counterpicking in the game. So by their own design, counterpicking makes sense. And we argued for a long time in Overwatch 1 that it didn't. I was happy when it wasn't so relevant at the start of Overwatch 2, I'll admit that. But the RPG team comp builder aspect of 1 was so much more important than just counterpicking really. Because the things they could do to protect protect each other was so much harsher in 6v6, whereas, as I say, in 5v5, there's always kind of openings for you to flex your hero pool around. So if you like to play a lot of heroes... That's just not... That's literally not true in the tank role at all. 5v5 is great, especially if you like running back to spawn to swap on tank. And when these kids swap to Widowmaker, I can't express myself because half the... Like, I have to pick Sombra or a character that can actually deal with the Widowmaker now. When another, another tank used to be able to help me, right? But instead of that tank used to be able to help me, it's power from zoning out snipers and one-shot characters and allowing more DPS to be picked and, and walk forward, right? Instead of allowing that to happen, now my hero pool is more limited because all the supports have gotten that extra power and just get out of jail free car immortalities, which makes my experience in DPS way less valuable because now everything I'm shooting is becoming a mortal or getting bailed out of jail for free. Tank. But I think everybody should be swapping. I think the community is like getting away a little bit because the tank. What people hated about Overwatch 1 at the end was the endless sustain, right? It wasn't how tanks like force space. It was the sustainability of these tanks and how they had infinite resources. But now, instead of actually tanks creating space for you, that power has gone to supports and more healing and sustain resources. The same thing we all hated to help one tank be able to survive on its own is the focal point oftentimes in our community conversation we're not really having the necessary conversation on the counter picks for the other four heroes on the team which i think matters a ton and let's just keep stacking up these points i think the queue times in 5v5 have undoubtedly improved in overwatch 2 you might argue that's because they're adding more content and it's a live service game now free to play etc but overwatch 1 kept going on discounts anyway it you cannot compare a free to play model on a game that was abandoned that the public knew was abandoned to the game going on discounts
That's not a point. That's not a point. That's just yapping. That's not actually a point, Frito. That's not a point. No, it's not even remotely comparable, and I think he would admit that. I'm not going to hammer that one home too much. That is that is night and day right there. It wasn't that expensive, and frankly, during the entire lifetime, nobody cared to play. One, they were waiting for the new game. Player problem, whether it's open queue, roll queue, we just did not ever have the players. And I think there's some rose-tinted glasses. There was back when P the tank heroes were actually fun. There were less people. Like I, in my games, you had a harder time finding support, for example, in the moth meta than you did in uh um than you did tanks, because I'd flex to Zarya. I wouldn't even mind playing Reinhardt because Reinhardt was fun. You know what heroes people didn't want to play? Arisa. Sigma, they wanted to play Diva Ryan Zari, who even to this day are still the highest pick rate tanks in the game. I think people would be willing to play Junker Queen. I'd flex to Junker Queen. I love Junker Queen. She's fun, right? I'd play Tank Doomfist, right? These tanks have been more catered to attract the DPS-esque player in 5v5. And that's not because of the 5v5 format. That's because they decided to actually design the heroes this way instead of boring, slow Orisa. Boring slow Sigma. That's a game design and hero design change that has nothing to do with the game format. And supports and how they've been getting queued more have proven that you can make the role more attractive. That is what has happened. It is proven that you could have done it based on what has happened to support in this game. That is fact. You have seen it happen. So the idea that they couldn't have done it to tank, I think is just wrong. Tank players for Overwatch 1 that had instant queues, got to really dominate the game, and now they're moving to Overwatch 2 and complaining that they just don't do enough, despite needing to do quite a lot. And I'm kind of with them in a way, because tank is very difficult. And no, everything you do, I, like there's a clip of Super playing Winston that Flax reacted to, and like he, everything he does just gets constantly immortalityed, constantly booped, CC, all of this stuff, right? That's why the role was miserable. Because of AOE healing supports that have these get out of jail free cards, that have these MO abilities, that punish the tank role because tanks have the least ability to deal with it out of anyone. Your game experience as a tank player doesn't feel in your hands at all. And it's even worse in 5v5 than 6v6. If the countless MOs and things like that were actually reduced in, five, in 6v6, more people would have played tank. If countless stuns that people complain about would have been reduced in 6v6, more people would have played tank. But now we're tripling down on the exact same thing that made people want to stop playing tank to begin with across all ranks, and you're still seeing the tank queue times be just as bad as they were before. It's a game design issue. Formatting doesn't fix it. And I think they do need to do another balance pass to the game, but there was some medicine Overwatch 2 so far where tank was incredibly good. It hasn't always been like this. And before you know it, we're getting back to a place where Junker Queen or Ramatra or whoever are hard carrying games again. Another problem with this viewpoint is often it's expressed by high tier players. And you can talk all about the tank synergy and its potential in Overwatch 1. The reality was that for, I'm going to say somewhere between 90 and 99% of all players of Overwatch, most of the time the tank synergies and meta were utterly irrelevant, and especially for metal ranked players the game was really just about pick reinhardt or have a very hard time so so the very same tank synergies that you and everyone else defending 5v5 are claiming were so oppressive that you had to remove a tank from the game you're now saying that they weren't even relevant in low level play your argument goes against itself you're not actually arguing for 5v5 here you're actually arguing for 6v6 and you don't realize it because now that counter swapping and forcibly playing the right tank effect that you claim made Overwatch 1 miserable, that everybody, that Avril claimed it, Jake claimed it, everybody claimed this, right? You are now saying that that exact same thing not only didn't matter in low level play, but now that same concept is now forced to your casual tank player who didn't have to deal with it because there's only one tank and it's easier to rock, paper, scissors. And you auto lose or you're hard getting, getting hard countered. This, like, you're proving your own point wrong. You are arguing against yourself with that point. Like, you're secretly arguing for 6v6, but you don't realize it. This is what I see people saying all the time. So now you, as the average player, get screwed. It, this, this, like, I, I, it doesn't get any more obvious than this, Frito. I, like, you're arguing for 6v6 and you don't even realize it. I love it. I love it. Setting the tank experience aside, because we all agree it's kind of rough recently, but look at the other four squishies in the game. The game, thankfully, and for the better in every single way, moved away from needing to hold the hand of your tank constantly and play with them as a death ball perfectly, making an RPG team comp builder comp. We're not doing that anymore. I don't think that's necessarily how Overwatch played. 
You didn't have to hold the hand of your tank, right? Like some t like yeah, you could off angle with tanks. That was more so like I guess brawl or goats, but like dive, people took different angles. Like poke, you took different angles, right? Sometimes you have to go with your tank, but sometimes you didn't. And also, again, like I said, it's like it's more difficult to kill a support in this game because of the support passive and all the buffs they've had to get to compensate for the lack of tank because that power from off tank, like you admitted earlier, Frito, went away from the off tank into supports. So when you're 1v1ing a support as damage, it is harder in this game. And don't say, oh, well, 1v1s didn't happen too often. 1v1s and duels happened all the time. And they happen more in this game. So if it's harder for a DPS to win that duel in this game, because supports have been overtuned a ton with the support passive, new heroes being able to do everything, Kiri Goku TP through walls, two-shot you, go immortal at the same time, right? Ilari has a heal pylon that auto heals her that if you're not shooting the pylon first, you're going to guarantee lose that duel. She also has CC and hit scan that can two-tap you. Bap shift got buffed. His drone time got buffed, right? I think there was another buff Bap got. The support passive is there, right? It is not easier to duel these characters and win 1v1s as a damage player in this game unless you are forced to play one of the one-shot heroes, which are even more prevalent and frustrating in this game. And that's why you had to constantly see the meta DPS heroes get buffed more than ever, like Bastion, like Sojourn who dominated the first meta. Somehow Genji got nerfed before all this. Tracer had to get buffed. Sombra had to get buffed after her first set of nerfs, right? Torbjorn had to get buffed. I might have said Torb already. Echo had to get buffed. So now you're stuck trying to individually increase the power levels of all of these characters. And where does the power creep stop? It doesn't. It's not easier to win duels as a DPS hero in Overwatch 2. You just see them in front of your face a little bit more, but it's not actually easier, right? Right? It's not actually easier. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. Without the BS sustain heroes in Overwatch 1, it's easier to get kills. It just is, because there actually has to be execution. The heroes had less health. Their abilities weren't as strong. Instead, now as a DPS or support, you can get it's objectively your position, true. hold it, land your value, and that's what the game's about. 5v5 is way better like this. Yeah, it's, it's value. Force the MOCDs. Force the grip. Get healed across the map value it's a bait the duels weren't like that in overwatch one because they weren't that's the way the game plays the heroes can be reworked to kind of have a much more reasonable distribution of power what i mean is in 6v6 the synergies were so high the outlier heroes were so much more severe whether it's Smetra, bastion etc they could never have too much the, the synergies that you said aren't important for most of the players and yet now are being forced onto the entire player base at a base skill floor level of power for each of these heroes to compensate for the last of a, lack of a tank the power levels that have been added to both tank and supports individually that now have caused many DPS heroes that are meta to get buffed X, like a ton too. The same synergies you said did not affect the player base. And it's even worse for the tanks for that matter. They just utterly couldn't design tanks. They didn't know what to do with Orisa because they wanted to have this bunker playstyle, but they also had Sigma doubling down on that. In the end, it feels like their vision for that old... What made double shield happen was fortify. All you had to do was nerf Fortify. I've said it for four years. It was the sustainabilities and AOE healing stacking together. You could keep the bunker, but why did the bunker tanks have better self-sustained brawl abilities than the brawl tank Reinhardt? Why did Orisa have CC immunity in a game ripe with CC at a brawling distance and Reinhardt didn't? Why did Orisa have headshot immunity, right? Fortify is still a problem even in this game because you see every it's it's obvious it wasn't the shields People hate fortify in this game too because it's the exact same now as it was in overwatch one with a little bit of extra health Right, it's obvious what those issues were and it's because the devs never did it right Even though all the pro players knew exactly how to fix it They had abandoned the game and gone to overwatch 2. It never got a real chance Orisa character got and I actually would say with this balance team they'd be willing to gut fortify if they had balanced the same way They have like aggression that they balance now It would have gotten nerfed into Ramatra and the gap between boring halt and bunker compared to poke you down and take Opportunities to close the gap with Ram. I don't know. I think Ram is an awesome character in he Overwatch is. 2. But I also did in Ram is an awesome character in Overwatch 2 that could have existed in Overwatch 1 as well
enjoy playing bunker in overwatch one and it's just like a more interesting less bs way to play what i awesome hero. more on the gap between high level gameplay and Little the average player because his block there was plenty is of tank characters in overwatch one that just couldn't function in most metas unless you positioned perfectly because they had to be balanced with the mindset that the potential synergy and top tier positioning would cycle their cooldowns and be so oppressive that the balancing had to be toned back on those characters for their peak output otherwise they would dominate the average tier of play remember these same synergies that you're claiming didn't exist all of a sudden would dominate the low level play. The, the, the ranks where people didn't care and picked Ryan and Zarya anyway. These statements are contradicting themselves. This is not accurate. Which is it? I know which one it is. You know which one it is too. The, the answer is these things didn't affect average players. Not nearly to the degree of high ranks, right? And simple minor tweaks to these characters to be frank with you and their abilities would have solved it but now instead all of that power and all of that passive p strength has been added to these heroes on their own at their skill floor so now they do affect the average level of plank uh, average level of play which is why you see so many people even in low ranks being forced to counter swap now instead of in 6v6 where they didn't have to do it nearly as much due to what has happened to these heroes passive power levels there was metas where Reinhardt was unplayable at higher tiers, but was the entire meta tank for the rest of the players. Imagine that. This is an argument Flats would go on, and I'm almost coming at it from the other end of it, making a different conclusion, looking at the same evidence. He says that it's kind of bad that you'll go through the ranks on Reinhardt and then get up to the high ranks and realize, well, you actually can't really play him in Grandmaster. So good luck getting there on that character, but now you're out. I honestly think now there isn't that massive fall off between playing tank at the average tier of play and playing tank at the top tiers of play. The gap is much shallower. Now, what was sacrificed is higher end depth, but if only a few hundred players are actually actualizing that anyway, what's the point? Like, good for you. I'm not sure what to say about that. Let's listen to that playing again. Playing tank at the average tier of play and playing tank at the top tiers of play. The gap is much shallower. Now, what was sacrificed is higher end depth, but if only a few hundred players are actually actualizing that anyway, what's the point? Like, good for you that you get to play real Overwatch and it's this beautiful masterpiece of a competitive game. The rest of us are struggling out here with unsynergistic tanks and bad team comps. Overwatch 2, in comparison, is just far more playable always. And let me just make it very- That's just not- that's literally not true. The game can't be more rock, paper, scissory and more playable at the same time. The whole point about what rock, paper, scissor does is that it makes people playing their favorite characters rock, paper, scissors. Therefore, they cannot do it. That makes the game less playable. That is literally not true. That is, you're like it, it's you're, you're just claiming this. And it's not what actually happens when you put the game into practice. And you can see it in players like Hawk. We're talking about this. Tanks and players, he'd usually be able to gap on a character like D.Va. He simply can't in 5v5 because the way that you can express skill as a tank has been drastically reduced. That's not a better game. Games that have skill floors and skill ceilings crunched together are not better. You want those things to be as far apart as possible so there's a big learning curve. So if somebody is better, they have more ways to actually express their skill. That makes people want to play the game longer. It makes it have a freshness to it, a fairness to it, if you will, so that if you actually put the work in, you can get the reward. But that's not nearly as true anymore. And most tank players can see that. And that's where Overwatch lost the most, really, frankly, was in the tank role, a game that's format was changed to try to get more people to play tank. And it just didn't work. It did the opposite. We tried, but it didn't work. And it's only going to get worse over time. That's not solvable, which is why we should redirect course from 5v5 as soon as possible, because there's no way to solve these issues. You can't do it. It's clear that I acknowledge that we're in this insane power creep era of the game, but even with that being the case, 5v5 is just far more fun in every aspect for every role, including tank. Because while tank is brutal now, it was way more brutal in Overwatch 1, where you had to have your off tank synergize I, with you. I wouldn't say being forced to pick the meta tank constantly, the flavor of the month is better. I wouldn't say removing the depth of the game is better. I wouldn't say removing player's option is better. Less is not more, Frito. Less is not more. And you'll and I you'll see a ton of tank players commenting this. Because it's not. And you know what? The queue times reflect that. Because if tank was so much more popular and so much more fun, you'd have a lot more people playing it. Now tanks have the exact same issues they had in Overwatch 1. Exacerbated. Right? They're, 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 they're more true in this game. The MOs and all these plays that denied your value that the, from the supports that had a constant get out of jail free cards, heroes that you used to be able to punish when they misplayed, are even more prevalent in this game. And now you're just getting puppet mastered by someone not even in your own role, and it's not even in your own control. That's not more fun, and you're gonna continue to see this theme happen. Though, that's more of a subjective point, but less is not more, and I guess you'll have to let the people talk on this one, but you'll see.
in 5v5, it's very, very important that you play with your support's value because they're the ones that are kind of picking up that off tank slack. Well, in Overwatch 1, that was still kind of the case with the supports a bit, but there was an additional player that you had to somehow synergize it was less with, true. and there was far more bad tank team compositions than there was good ones. I actually can't believe that I have to remind us all about this, but think of how many matchmaking games where your tank combo was basically unplayable against the enemy team's comp. Yeah, and now that happens in 5v5 and we have less option to deal with it. I'm still getting a ball player on the wrong map. I'm still getting a hog player on the wrong map. I'm still getting a queen on the wrong map against the wrong comp. And now there's not a second tank to help give us a chance that, to actually win. It's that same problem, but worse. It's that same problem, but worse. Exactly. I'm not going to repeat myself on it. We can't just look at the top end. It's the same problem, the but worse. Do. We have to look at what the average player's experience was. And having the game feel unplayable most of the time is not a good one. Five, five. Thank you. 5v5 does that. That's what 5v5 does to your average player, Frito. You secretly want 6v6. You get it, Frito. You've just come to the wrong conclusion. You said it yourself. The tank synergies didn't get picked in lower rank, but now they have to be. They have to be picked more in lower rank than they did previously. You are arguing for 6v6 and don't realize it, which I know, which I know will make you come around. You're on the money. You just came to the wrong conclusion. Five is always playable. You might get rolled, but it's playable. Yeah, Overwatch one. How is I getting rolled playable? Open queue system. I talked. How, how is the freedom of play getting ripped away from you playable? That's less playable. That's less fun. That's less enjoyment. About this with That's Nathan, not what made Overwatch beautiful. Queue. Like if we had a draft mode, if they went full out, lots more heroes, complex draft mode, then they could have thinned down the power of those multi tank comps that kind of ruined the game, or AOE healing and all that. All of that added synergy. Multi tank comps didn't ruin the game, by the way. AOE healing did video on that this week. There's a reason why. Even in Pete Goat's meta, the comp that ended up beating Ghost first was Somber Goats, where you dropped one of the tanks from the multi-tank meta for a DPS. If the if the tanks were better, why weren't the tank one of the supports dropped to play the DPS? Why was it one of the tanks that got dropped? That's because the three tanks that were allegedly overpowered weren't overpowered. They weren't that good. Because the next meta that came out was Arisa Sigma. The tank synergies weren't what broke the game. It was the support synergies. It was AoE healing stacking. And the proof is in the pudding. The proof was in the pudding. That is what happened. It's not really refutable because if you look at how the meta changed, that's what happened. And if those tanks synergizing were so broken, why didn't they stay meta? Why did the tank get dropped? And I'm, I'm going to argue this in the, the next video. I'm not going to go into this too much now. value that broke the balance of 6v6 with bans or draft. They could have figured that out. That's what I think. I don't think it was a balance Yeah, ban breaking ghost doesn't work. Concern, and they chose to kind of split the difference on that and just cut the top end off, which was a genius move and has worked. The Overwatch League, despite it maybe ending soon, produced far better gameplay and the average player's game. The, the Overwatch League, you mean the business that failed was better? Play, I would attest, is far better. So much better that I'm confused while we're even bringing this up nowadays. In Overwatch 1, you legit felt like some matches you loaded in and you couldn't play. Kind of like going to the playground, getting everybody ready to play basketball, and then the one guy who's supposed to bring the ball brings a rugby ball. Yeah, good luck bouncing that. And then for the rest of that match, everything's off kilter and basically doesn't function because your team isn't playing the pre-described synergistic tank combo that your team just had to pick. I, I, I'm not going to argue this anymore. I've argued it like for every point, but you guys know what I'm going to say. In 5v5, that's worse. And you've seen it in the rock, paper, scissors tank thing. I will take rock, paper, scissors over that. Certainly. The reason you're, is I feel in all three roles, you do have options to counterpick anything the enemy throws at you. Okay, might be a bit lame that we got to counterpick all the time now, but I'd rather have the tools in my hands to counterpick and know it's up to me as opposed to my tanks or my other tank in 6v6 just doesn't want to play the game today. While you could argue in 5v5, having one player that's throwing is more severe, I disagree. I think in 6v6, the playability of the game, let's just put winning the game aside like winning shouldn't be what's important to the conversation the playability was easily hijacked by just one player messing up the team comp I <laughs> like the same player who does it as the only tank in this game it's worse you're arguing for 6v6 and you don't even realize it the wool's been pulled over your eyes oh my goodness and i think the comment section is going to get this i love you frito that you, you've been injected with the Overwatch 2 copium. We're here to save you.
5v5, far better. Even if you have a wacky one trick, they at least can go get their position and get their value to the extent they can. And do the okay, that, that goes completely against everything you've been saying about rock, paper, scissors this video. Today, the main reason why I feel like I can test this is in Overwatch 1, there was plenty of times where I just didn't want to play the game. Too easy for the meta to be horrible and too easy to know that if my team doesn't load in with the specific characters that I'm going to have a horrible time. We've had moments like that in Overwatch 2 so far. I'd say the Gigahog era and now the deployment era. It's easy to get stomped. But even in those games where I'm getting stomped, I feel like there's a window for me to swap to something to try something else to have a chance. Doesn't always work out, but because the enemy is counterable, if you engage with the game on its terms, it's still playable. Things were more counterable in the previous game because the inherent abilities weren't as strong as they are now. You just might have to learn more heroes, which is convenient because they keep adding them. I think this game is far more open for its design space because they don't have to worry about how they're going to break the tank category when they add a new one due to synergies. Instead, now tanks can do the thing that they're supposed to do. What I mean when I say that is hold the front line. That's what I'm not. I, I'm not going to repeat myself. 90% of the players expected their tank to do in Overwatch 1 anyway. Think of the genius of this decision of them making and reworking and simplifying and making it more straightforward for most players. They were... You, you didn't make it... Okay. S simplifying, aka removing all the depth. That's not better. Removing what made it fun for a ton of players is not better. That's like saying map pools and limited maps in the game are better because it simplifies it for people. There's less stuff they have to learn. That's not true. And you saw how people reacted to this. That's just not true. And now since there's only a one dimensional way to play tanks that is so much easier to get hard countered, you just don't have the freedom to pick anymore. And that's not fun. They're already just kind of walking to cart and brawling it out. That's how they played Overwatch to begin with. That's what they thought it was, right? The deeper complexity that I understand that the 6v6 advocates are talking about, it was far more severe to maintain high ground, forcing more cooldowns out. It was more complicated in 6v6. But for most players, they redesigned the game to play like they were playing it anyway. Meaning that players can jump in and understand what's going on. There's no point of having a deeply complex game that it's player- Yeah, that's great. They understand what's going on because what happens every game is the support uses an MO cooldown. Oh. Every support has an immortality. Oh, there's only one thing I can do as, as, as my tank is sit there and shoot at the other one. If I go for the back line, they all become immortal or life reaver pulls it away or, or something. That, that's not a better game, right? That's not a better game. And by the way, it's not simpler for people to pick up because now they have to learn more niche interactions. Oh, sleep dart only heal, sleeps me for a tank is three and a half seconds. Oh, well, oh, that hero can double bubble themselves. Oh, you know, the list goes on, right? It's, it's not a better game. It's not easier for them to understand. They still have to learn everything they learned previously, right? In fact, I would say they have to learn more. Roll passives, specific interactions. Like that wasn't a, that wasn't as prevalent in Overwatch One. But this is a little bit different of, a, of a, an argument that we don't really need to get into too much base doesn't get at all. Now, I still think there's layers for the community to learn about Overwatch 2, but they made the tank category more forgiving for most players. It is less interesting for top tier players, but even you guys. That's not true. That's not true. Because if you make a mistake, you're like, you're out faster, right? With one less player in the game, right? And you being the only tank, if you make big mistakes, which granted are a bit harder to make with the health pools, but if you make a really bad decision, you stick out like a sore thumb, you then get blamed for it way more. It's way more obvious when you're making a mistake, right? And your team loses faster when you do. That's not more forgiving. That's actually more punishable. You could argue that. We'll see. I think Master Ian's video was very, very good on that one. If you want to go watch what it's like from your average player. And the sentiment from most average tank players that I've seen have been that didn't have that many tanks. You were still getting fast cues in Overwatch 1. And yes, they've reworked the balance of the game so that support has overshadowed the tank power. I agree with that. But I think it's pretty clear that the game is far more fun, more approachable, more playable, and more of a shooter, maybe most importantly. Bobby 5 playing like a sh Forcibly being counter-swapped into other picks is not a more free way to play the game. It's not more approachable in that regard. A shooter game instead of a, I don't know, deck builder. Because like you're not playing one. the game. I'm sick of saying the RPG game's playing for builder. you. I know I've said it so many times in this video, but I don't want to play a deck builder. I want to learn some heroes and go shoot some stuff. For the most part, or or set up or support a teammate doing that. That should be what the oh, game is. Set up or support a teammate doing that. Kind of like what two tanks did. It's about, and it is. Some of the stuff we're shooting out is hard deployables, but once you get those out of the way, you still get to shoot the enemy. Just straight up, so much. Uh, hey, listen, Frida. Once you get the double shield sustain abilities out of the way and all the ammo's out of the game, you're shooting people in six v six too.
much more fun and adds so much longevity to the game now. While yes, losing some of the Overwatch 1 complexity simplifies the game a bit, it takes it to a place where we can be free to play and players can jump from trying Apex to like jumping to Overwatch and it's not as severe because it is shooter game first. With yeah, yeah, shooter game, you're shooting immortal characters on cooldown. That's not a shooter. That's not a shooter. You're, you're playing tic-tac-toe. I'm playing, all right, let me force the ML. Let me kill the support three times over. Like, elements that you have to the, It's the same problems in this game, just worse, right? It's the same problems that Overwatch 1 had, but worse in this As game. As opposed to a full-out, pretty much MOBA game most of the time. The thing I think people forget about when we have these conversations is, like, it only really applied to such a small percentage of players in that 60 million or whatever sales for Overwatch 1. Most of them liked open queue. And the sweaty try-hard roll queue variant that Thank the you, Freedom. community wanted wasn't Thank you. what the average mainstream player wanted. Just because they wanted the dream of open queue. So now we force the power of those tank synergies directly onto one player. All right, and players who didn't have to deal with the oppressiveness of the meta. And now they all do. Does it mean that they want- With the same exact balance flaws and game philosophy in the new game as the old game. But all the downsides that came with it, because in those games, you might not have a tank and the enemy does. And all of a sudden their game is way easier or they're running a good comp. You have a bad comp, way too reliable. The gap between the comp power of good comp versus bad comp was unplayable. And from a quality standpoint, even- And now that, per that power is put onto one player by default every game. Putting aside the player numbers and all that, I think there's too many stacking reasons for me to like 5v5. I can't even really find a gap where I would even consider saying 6v6 as a leg to stand on. Because I think every single point that they make falls flat when faced with the reality of the evidence that we had for years. Yeah, that's it. Mic drop. I've been Frito for your over- You argued against yourself the whole time, Frito! I love you, but you gotta wake up, my guy! You argued against yourself the entire time. I'm gonna try to rip the wool off your eyes. The copium, right? Look, you made great points, but your conclusions were complete opposites of the reality of what's happening in the game and what has happened, right? I love the points you made. You're right about a lot of this stuff, but you don't realize that 5v5 makes all of those things worse than 6v6 did because it not only forces it on players in more ranks than it did previously, but it's not solvable through balance. Well, in 6v6, you still had that chance, right? So this is kind of my response. I'm going to have a better video breaking down what actually is breaking the game and what broke the game, which were supports. AoE healing is what made the tank comps broken. The sustainabilities are what did that. I'm going to have a, vi a very in-depth video explaining that throughout its life. So Frito, you're right. Mic drop, my guy. You just argued for 6v6 the entire time and didn't realize it. We will help you come to this conclusion. It's not 5v5 that you like. Right? And these problems, when they don't go away in a year, when they don't go away in two, and we've spent two years working on a format that's just going to further exacerbate the problem. I can't pronounce anything. I'm, I'm on Raz right now. That further emphasize the problems that Overwatch 1 had. At that point, it's too late for this franchise. And it would have lost its identity. It's what made it special. What made millions of players fall in love with it. And there's just no way to get that back in this format. It's not possible. So what was a game design issue that's going to continue to rear its ugly head as time goes on will be stuck with no future. So that's my response to this. It, it's the issue. It, it's the facts that people are claiming that are wrong that did not actually happen in the game that have me frustrated. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Much love to everybody at home. Much love to Frito. See y'all later. Peace out.